Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial. Here I'm going to show you exactly how to select and edit elements using jQuery and Ajax techniques. If you didn't watch part one, you definitely should watch it because the finished web page that I'm going to be talking about in this tutorial is actually shown in the previous tutorial. So what exactly are you going to learn in this video? How to select elements in your web page in numerous ways. How to edit elements in your web page in numerous ways. Learn how to monitor our event handlers with jQuery and JavaScript and a bunch more. I'll hit you with a bit of code and then I'll describe it. Here I'm defining the beginning of my HTML page. In the last line, I'm pulling the latest jQuery library directly from the jQuery homepage. Now I can use all the functions to find in that library. I could have stored the library on my server and referenced it that way also using the sorts attribute as well. Here I'm defining some CSS styles that I'll use in the code below. If you don't know what this is, you should definitely check out my CSS style HTML tutorial. I normally would link to a style sheet and not embed the code directly in the HTML, but I wanted to keep all the code in the same place. Here I'm assigning all of the event handlers. I'm telling the browser that everything that lies between the script tags is JavaScript code. If you don't know what this is, see my JavaScript scripting tutorial. I then tell the browser with the second line of code that I want it to perform all of the actions defined between the curly braces as soon as the page loads. With the line of code that begins with document.getElementById, I'm saying that I want the node with the identification name one button, which lies in the current document or current web page, to be assigned an event handler. When someone clicks this element, I want the function name bold the text to be called. The element with the identification name one button is located in the HTML code below. It is a form button and you can see it here over at the bulleted items, the second bulleted item down. The other lines of code inside the curly braces perform the same actions to other buttons on that page. This is a JavaScript function. It's called when someone clicks the button I just described. It sets the element in the web page with the identification name first to have a CSS font weight equal to bold. You can change the CSS styling of any element on the page without performing a page reload. Here you are seeing the jQuery selector for the first time. jQuery allows you to easily select elements in a web page and edit them in numerous ways. The selector, by the way, starts with a dollar sign and has an opening bracket and a closing bracket. On the right here, it is surrounding P, the letter P in quotes. Here I'm using it to select all the paragraph tags. Then I use a pre-built method of the selector name size to return the total number of paragraphs on the web page. I throw those results into a string and display them in an alert box the visitor will see. Here I demonstrate another way to select elements. I'm stating that I want to make the div with the class name first div disappear off the screen with the fade out function. When the button below is clicked, it will do just that. The div tag I'm referencing looks like what you can see here in the third bolded item on the lower left. This function will change the text that lies in the paragraph with the identification name second. This is a lot easier than straight JavaScript. The paragraph tag it is referencing and changing looks like the third bolded item you can see here in the lower left hand side of your screen. This function will look for all paragraph tags that lie inside of the div with the class name first div and insert the text we are the same into those. This function will assign new CSS styling to the paragraph which is of class third and that tag you can see right here in the second bolded item on the left. The function toggle class will allow you to change CSS styling without a page reload. Here I use the jQuery selector to choose the last paragraph on the web page and change the font style of it to italic. You have just seen the beginning of the jQuery styling methods, but I think you'd have to admit that the CSS function is pretty neat. Remember when I made the div of class first div disappear with the fade out function? Well, I thought better of it, and I'm using the show function in this circumstance to bring it back on screen. Here I'm stating that I want the fourth paragraph element on the web page to be colored blue. And no, that wasn't a typo. I meant to type fourth. The first element on the web page has the index of zero instead of one. Yes, you also just learned another way to CSS style elements in jQuery. You can also directly change CSS attributes of an element by referencing the attribute name after the attribute name style. Here is another way to select an element in a web page. The selector code makes reference to an element with the identification name fourth. The function slide up will make the element name fourth seem as if it was swallowed up by the web page. It disappears slowly with a slide 
and the actual element you can see here in the third bulleted item in the lower left hand side of your screen. This code will insert a new paragraph element after the element named fifth. The new element will contain the text another paragraph in all circumstances and the rest of the HTML code should be completely understandable if you know HTML and CSS. Here it is by the way right here for you to look at. You can also check out your think tank to download all of this code. It's 100% free and free to use in any way that you would like. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you even more ways to select and edit elements. But first, here is a sample of what will be covered in the next tutorial. Till next time. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I made this page right here. I'm gonna show you how we can add a little icon next to this email. Make the table a little bit prettier. Fix the table title so it's a little prettier. Mess with the fourth paragraph. Mess with all paragraphs in this div right here. Highlight the fourth. Find a paragraph based off of whether it has an attribute or not. And find the paragraph name third. All in the next tutorial. Till next time.